Gotta love the old cub farm hall. The old carburetor systems on them where you have to continually choke them to get them on these cold mornings because it's in the low 40s out here this morning. But it cranked right up and it come over here, done a fantastic job. Now this is will eventually be its home over here, but right now I just had to get it out of the way over there at the other barn because I got seen in on a pallet back in there. And I thought, you know what, why not just bring it over here and let it be enjoying its new home. All right, guys, now my part begins. I've got to set three posts down the middle of the barn here. And that's what I'm doing now. I've measured my distances and got my first post right. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get it set and put in concrete. And uh, then we'll move on and set the one on the other end of the barn. And then we'll set the middle one last. These posts will be what will hold up the loft uh, in the middle of the barn out here because that's a 20 foot span. That's a little, little bit large of a span uh, to just span lumber across. And I want it to resemble the old style barns as much as possible. So I'm gonna put big posts and beams in here to kind of uh, help mimic that. Plus it's just more structural.
play it. Yes, it is cold out here today. It's like 33 degrees. The wind's blowing about 12, 14 miles an hour. But on a homestead, you don't stop just because it gets cold. I mean, you keep rolling. And that's what most people don't understand. They want to wait till 9 and 10 o'clock in the day to go outside. And as you can see, it's daybreak. The sun's just come up over the trees and up in the sky a little bit. We done fed all the animals. We done went and gathered up all the lumber brought it over here we've got everything set up ready to go to work this morning um we just try to keep going you know i mean that's what we do a lot of you's been asking what are we going to be doing inside the new barn build well i've come in i've put uh we're going to put a second floor in it because we wanted a loft in it that was the reason for this design i've got my main support timbers in here i've got my beams in here I started putting up all these. I put all this up yesterday by myself out here with the help of the tractor. And uh, Ms. Wanda's gonna be coming in today to help a little bit out there and see if she can't get me a little further along because it, with my leg messed up, I'm just so slow. I'm not, I'm used to rolling, getting a lot done. I could have done all this by myself yesterday if it hadn't have been for my leg giving me trouble. But Wanda's going to be helping me today to see if we can't get the rest of this done because weather's going to be changing here pretty soon. Going to be getting some rain and I want all this lumber up, not getting wet up under the roof here and stuff. We have an opening right here behind me. What this opening is for is we're going to come out of this corner right here with a stairwell that's going to be going up into the uh, second floor up here. We decided to put it against the back wall right here so we don't take up any of our floor space out here with steps or anything like that. And it'll be going up onto a landing up there on the second floor to give us access in and out of that. And then on the end, down here, right in the center at the top will be a door that we open up because the forks on my tractor will lift, right, or will lift that high and I'll be able to lift up anything I want to put up in the attic here. We'll be able to slide it off of the forks into the attic of the barn. Like if we want to store lumber or, you know, if we ever want to stack hay or anything like that up there, it can be reached right there. In the back right here, we're trying to decide now whether we want to just put a window back here to have some light up in the second floor because we have solar lighting that's going to be going in. But we're just trying to decide at this moment whether we're going to put a big window back there or whether we're going to put another door on the back side back here over in the corner here so we can open it to have airflow or be able to just if we want to hunt out of the back of it you know into the pasture back here or something like for deer hunting or something but not the cows not not the cows no but um you know just we're trying to take a lot of different things into consideration as we're building this because we may not have cows forever as we get older and we might want to just go up there if this is ever just turned all back into pasture and woods and stuff and we want to take a deer for you know in the winter time because the deer come right across the fence right here behind the barn it'd be a great place to sit up in there out of the cold and to be able to take a deer if you want one so lots of things to consider when you're constructing a barn like this uh, we're trying to think about everything in the future we might want to do as well as uh, everything that's just practical that we want to do. Now we'll be adding a 
lean to onto the back of it here. We're going to come off of this here with a lean to going out for the cows to get under and for us to be able to feed them back here and everything. And then the corral system will be built in behind it back in here. All that's down the road, but those are just plans that we have. Right now, we just want to try to get this structure closed in as best as we can and get it weatherproof so we can begin to start utilizing it and beginning to use the insides of it because we have a lot of plans for the inside of this barn. Okay, we look down our board and uh, we have the crown marked up in it. Now, when I say crown, when you look down the board, no, there's no such thing as a straight board. It just don't exist. If the board has got like that a little bit, you want this part going up in it because as you put the weight on it, it lays it down straight. You don't want to turn it over the other way because then you're already sagging. So you want your crown to be up. Lift it up just a little bit. One of the things I want to show y'all is this what happens when you have lumber cut at a lumber mill. These big high production mills. This board right here has zero strength to it whatsoever. It will not, this is like third growth timber. This right here is second growth, and it's what's called quarter sawn. By the way it's cut, this one here will be a strong board and usually stay pretty straight. This one will warp, twist, has no holding power whatsoever. The heart's still in it. It probably will crack and split at some point because that's in there. And you can look at the grains in it. This was probably grown from what they call one of these new super trees. It's a genetically modified tree. This one was the second growth it probably come up from a seedling somewhere in a, in a swamp or the edge of a hillside or something other. This one will have a lot of strength. This one has no strength to it at all.
I don't trust just nails and screws holding up boards like this. I drilled it, put half inch galvanized carriage bolts because I'm going through treated wood on this post. If you put regular bolts through there that's not galvanized, they'll just rust up from the treatment in the wood. So this is going to be the second floor and I just trust it more. And I'm also going to double this board out and I've got an angle bracket that's going to go in here, a steel plate that's going to go in there to help hold it. That'll ensure that my second floor in the barn is, uh, is held up really well as I double these bolts up and all these boards. Looks like you about finished. Yeah, I just got the last hanger up right here. Um, finally, Lord have mercy. That's a lot of nailing. It's a lot of hangers. But, you know, I mean, I forgot how many of them it was. It was like close to 50 of them that had to be put I think up. there was 40 on this one. Oh, was it 40? I knew it was a lot of them. We bought 50, but, um, but I've got them all up. Um, it looks nice. Okay, this is the other style that I have up. This here is made for like hanging beams or like if you got two of them nailed together like that right there, there was really no way to fasten them from the end once I tied them in here. I did I did nail them in, toenail them and screw them in, but I also came back and put a hanger on it just to be safe. I'm going to have one of those on all four corners of the building in here. This is the other style I got on the other end here. I didn't have much choice with it. I had to get a 90 degree one to go on the inside of this. It actually has a place to put three little lag bolts in it. And I may come back and do that because I put number 12 sinkers into the uh, beam up there. And the post, I, I think I might put the three lag bolts in it. I'll be doing that on each one of these posts on both sides of them all the way around the whole barn just as an extra support. Plus the regular galvanized bolts that we you seen me put in, um, I think we once we get all that done, plus the beam out here in the middle, that we'll have plenty to hold up the second floor of the barn. Well, guys, we finally got the stairwell framed out right here where the stairs are going to come down at. They're going to come from over here at this bulkhead, all the way down to the corner of this post down here. Uh, to get us up to the second floor up there. I made them three feet wide because I wanted to have plenty of room in case I wanted to carry something up there. I would have plenty of room to do it. Plus, I'll be able to put me a handrail on this side and uh, make it a lot safer, you know, to get up and down in the stairwell. Well, guys, we'll be moving into the next phases now that I have the second floor framed out. We're probably going to throw a few sheets of plywood up there so I've got something to walk on. And uh, we're going to be lathing out the top section up there trying to get the poplar boards ready to go around the top outsides of it once we get that done and get the flashing and all on it that will keep the rain from coming in on the sides inside it in here um, you can see there's openings on the sides over yonder then we'll frame up the ends next and try to get the top of this thing completely closed in before we even start to work on the bottom of it so I feel like that'll be a uh, probably be the best thing to do next. But you know, we were trying to figure out. Somebody asked us a question. I think it was on the live stream the other night. Said, "What are we going to call this barn?" And to be honest with you, I hadn't really, I hadn't really thought anything about it. And uh, we were sitting here, um, you know, in the chat, and somebody I forgot who it was made the comment. Said, "Why don't you call it the farm all?" barn because the cub has farm all wrote on it and it'd be a farm for all things so it's the farm all barn and it's uh so we thought that might be a good name uh, let us know what you think in the description down below we may call it the farm all barn well guys we're getting there it's going to be kind of slow but we're going to make it i believe so stay with us as we turn this shell of a barn right now into a masterpiece monitor type barn. I hope that you'll enjoy the build as we try to finish it. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.